hello guys good morning good morning from this part of the world it's a chilly morning and i'm outside because we are about to do a reset vlog where we're just resetting planning for the new month strategizing for the new month you know such kind of things is important so stay tuned uh, and yeah have this morning vlog reset routine with me so guys first things first you will need your bible as usual this is mine you'll need a notebook i get the smallest size and sticky notes i recommend highly recommend and the last thing you need is my rules because you need to write yeah So I want to share the passage of scripture that I have read today and it's First Chronicles chapter 17 and it's basically talking about, about God's promise to David and David's prayer. So let's start. Um, First Chronicles chapter 17 from verse 1. After David was settled in his palace, he said to Nathan the prophet, Here I am living in a palace of cedar. Well, the ark of the covenant of the Lord is under a tent. Nathan replied to David, Whatever you have in mind, do it, for God is with you. That night, the word of the Lord came to Nathan, saying, Go and tell my servant David, This is what the Lord says, You are not the one to build me a house to dwell in. I have not dwelt in a house from the day I brought Israel up out of Egypt to this day. I have moved from one tent site to another, from one dwelling place to another. Wherever I have moved with all the Israelites, they say to any of their leaders whom I commanded to shepherd the people, Why have you not built me a house of cedar? Now then, tell my servant David, this is what the Lord Almighty says. I took you from the pasture and from following the flock to be ruler over my people Israel. I have been with you wherever you have gone, and I have cut off all your enemies from before you. Now I will make your name like the names of the greatest men of the earth. And I will provide a place for my people Israel and will plant them so that they will have a home of their own and will no longer be disturbed. Wicked people will not oppress them anymore as they did at the beginning and have done ever since the time I appointed leaders over my people Israel. I will also subdue all your enemies. I declare to you that the Lord will build a house for you. When your days are over and you will go to be with your father, I will raise up your offspring to succeed you one of your own sons and i will establish his kingdom he is the one who will build a house for me and i will establish his throne forever i will be his father and he will be my son i will never take my love away from him as i took it away from your predecessor i will set him over my house and my kingdom forever his throne will be established forever nathan reported to david all the words of this entire revelation so I want us to meditate on this scripture and I want us to pick a few verses that God is clearly speaking to us through this word and he's been speaking to me and I feel like this word is like God's message to me and hopefully to you too and I want us to concentrate on verse 2 and it's okay from verse 1 David had been settled in a palace of cedar by the tent of the ark of the Lord he did not have a place to say God did not have like a dwelling place and David was troubled and David wanted to build a house for the Lord and Nathan told David whatever you have in mind to do do it for God is with you but then uh, when, Nathan, when Nathan went that night when he was sleeping I guess God talked to him and told him David is not the one to build my my house it's his son He's his his he's, he's the, the one that's coming after him. He is the one who's going to build my house. But I want you to take note of this. And he says, I took you from from the pasture and from following the flock to be ruler over my people Israel. 
first of all promotion is given by god it is god that will decide okay time up time is up for you to just live this ordinary life i want to give you this kind of life it is god that can make you a king from a shepherd boy let's continue i have been with you wherever you have gone and i have cut all your enemies from before you listen if you know you're living under god's protection and if you know that you are hidden under the shadow of the almighty i believe that this promise is for you i have been with you wherever you have gone even if your life feels like oh my god trouble keeps following me god is saying i have been with you wherever you have gone and have cut all your enemies from before you like you might have had a lot troubling you but guess what they have never been able to overcome because god has always cut off all your enemies from you and he says now i will make your name like the names of the greatest men of the earth and i will provide a place for my people israel and will plant them so that they will have a home of their own and will no longer be disturbed if you do not feel settled i want you to pray this over your life god says you remind God that Lord in your word you say that you will provide a place for your people Israel and you will plant them so that they will have a home and of their own and will no longer be disturbed and the law of us says wicked people will not oppress them anymore as they did at the beginning listen that's God's promise to you God says that you will not be oppressed anymore you will live free because God is going to give you a home where you're going to settle and no one else can promise you anything apart from god and you believe it because god is a man of his word when god says he's going to do something best believe he's going to do it god is not a man that he should lie when god says hey i'm going to give you a permanent place to settle because i am your god best believe he's going to do that when god says i will take you from a shepherd boy to a king and you will be ruler over my people best believe that that's the plan that god has for you so I would like to leave you with verse 2 that says whatever you have in mind do it for God is with you and I would like to tie it with the scripture of this month that I have written here I don't know if you can see it it's Habakkuk 2 verse 2 to 3 write down the revelation and make it plain on tablets so that whoever reads it may run with it for the revelation waits an appointed time it speaks of the end and will not prove false so it lingers wait for it it will certainly come and will not delay i believe that when god wants to tell you something he deposits it in your heart and i have had people say that god is not a gossiper and i believe them god is not a gossiper he's not going to put your vision and your dream in someone else's heart and expect you to accomplish it god is going to write it in the tablets of your heart so you have to listen and he says in habakkuk write it down so that it may be plain so that whoever reads it may run and whatever is in your heart i repeat first chronicles 17 verse 2 whatever you have in mind do it for god is with you know that everything god has asked you to do he has equipped you for it and you are more 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 than enough i hope that has blessed you today and i hope you take that home with you i love you I have also found it adequate to review David's prayer so that I can leave it with context or in context. So let's read David's prayer from verse 16. Then King David went in and sat before the Lord and he said, Who am I, O Lord, and what is my family that you have brought me this far? And as if this were not enough, in your sight, O God, you have spoken about the future of the house of your servant. You have looked on me as though I was the most exalted of men, O Lord God. What more can David say to you for honoring your servant? For you know your servant, O Lord, for the sake of your servant and according to your will, you have done this great thing and made known all these great promises. There is no one like you, O Lord, and there is no God but you, as we have heard this with our own ears. And who is like you, your people Israel, the one nation on earth whose God went out to redeem a people for himself and to make a name for yourself? and to perform great and awesome wonders by driving out nations from people from before your people whom you redeemed from Egypt you made your people Israel your very own forever and you O Lord have become their God and now Lord let the promise you have made concerning your servant and his house be established forever do as you promise so that it will be established and that your name will be great forever 
Then men will say, The Almighty, the Lord Almighty, the God of our Israel is God, is Israel's God, and the house of your servant David will be established before you. You, my God, have revealed to your servant that you will build a house for him, so that your servant has found courage to pray to you. O oh Lord, you are God. You have promised these good things to your servants. Now you have been pleased to bless the house of your servant, that it may continue forever in your sight. For you, O oh Lord, have blessed it, and it will be blessed forever. I want us to take one hard, strong lesson from David. Listen. At the end of David's life, David was called a man after God's own heart. So we have a lot to learn and we can learn a lot from David. And after Nathan told David all that God had said, David's reply is what gets me. And David, he starts, he starts by exalting the Lord and he says, Who is like you, Lord? Who, What is my family that you chose to favor me? What... Who are your people that you chose to look upon us with favor? So this continues to say that David was not an extra person. He wasn't He wasn't an extra person. He was just a basic person, an average person like me and you, but God picked him. He selected him and it says, It is you, David, that I will build my house upon. And David says that you did not just look upon me with kindness, but my entire generation, because God promises that it is through your offspring that my house will be established. And David says, establish your promises. He says, now God, let the promise you have made concerning your servant and his house be established forever. See, in every promise that you read in the scripture you should know that the scripture is god talking to you and every promise you should read that you read in the scripture i want you to hold it and to pray that lord you have said this over my life may it be established may people know that i am a person favored by god okay and he says it is the lord who has blessed the last verse and it says now you have been pleased to bless the house of your servant that it may continue forever in your sight for you O oh lord have blessed it and it will be blessed forever i don't know why people relinquish the blessings on themselves it's like god blesses you and then you're like you're busy wiping them off <laughs> no when you go to church or when you go to anywhere you go to and blessings are spoken over your life maybe by your parents maybe by your uncles maybe by your aunts your relatives or even in the church you should know that God has chosen to bless me and his blessing is going to remain, up, to remain upon me and my family. See, everything might not be okay right now, but remember Habakkuk 2 verse 2 to 3 and that's why you should have an anchor scripture that you remind yourself of every time. And for me, it has been Habakkuk 2 verse 2 to 3. It says, for the revelation awaits an appointed time. It speaks of the end and will not prove false. Though it lingers, wait for it. It will certainly come and will not delay. Listen, anything God has said is going to be established in your, in your life. It's going to be established in your life. The revelation awaits an appointed time. It will come, though it lingers, wait for it. It will certainly come and will not delay. God has you in the palm of his hand. God knows you. God knows everything that you're going through. It is you that is turning a blind eye on God. How about you start? God says his faith is shining on you. He's no longer giving you his back. It's his face that is shining on you. So stop giving God your back and look look at him. He's your father. Get some love for God. I'd like to leave you at that point. I think you should make it your point to read First Chronicles chapter 17. All of it. Internalize it and let these words echo and linger in your soul. That's how you produce fruit. I love you. So I would like to talk a little about journaling and journaling involves just 
putting your thought on paper it's not a dear 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 diary kind of thing where you're like dear diary today is monday and you can do that but journaling is literally thinking on paper putting your thoughts on paper what are your plans what are your weaknesses what are your strengths what you have you can have so many journaling triggers there are some people who ask themselves questions but i would prefer writing and putting your thought down on paper there's a book i'm reading right now i won't tell you the title but it highly encourages putting your thought on paper and writing down everything so that you can know the state of your mind because if you take my journals and actually read them you can get a lot about the kind of person that i am simply because i choose to translate who i am on paper but there's some people whose diaries look more like planners and that's okay so journaling is just a way of helping you release your thoughts and actually if you have plans or ideas and write them down when you read them you're able to see if this is a good idea or if, if this idea needs polishing i don't know if you're getting me but i would highly 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 recommend that you start journaling and the little journal i use is very affordable and very portable this it's very very convenient for me but the pack is the pages run out very fast because it's a small book and i write a lot so i love this book for me also sticky notes help you take the keynotes like if you have verse of the day or quote of the day you can write them up in your sticky notes and i would basically like to leave you at that thank you so much for watching thank you for always tuning in I can't wait for the new month of June. Also stay tuned for the Climb podcast. We are about to to start shooting season 2 of the Climb podcast. You can find all the previous episodes on Spotify or Anchor. Thank you so much for always being here. I love you. Take care of yourself. Till next time. Bye.